Since being awoken by atomic bombs, Godzilla has lit up the silver screen. But his looks seem to be ever-changing, starting with the original. Let's go through his theatrical looks and story. Animated In his first ever appearance, Godzilla has small arms, thick legs, and dorsal plates down his spine. His pupils are tiny, and he has fangs and pointy ears. After attacking Japan, he gets disintegrated to bone. A new gigantus, whoops, I mean Godzilla, appears in Godzilla Raids again. This monster is thinner, with longer arms, a smaller head, and larger pupils. When in close-ups, his teeth appear to be jutting out. Sadly, he's buried in ice. But in King Kong vs. Godzilla, he busts free! He's now in color, is more plump, toeless, and has a lizard-like head with yellow eyes, no ears, and no fangs. He faces off against a giant ape, tumbling into the ocean, only to be washed ashore in Mothra vs. Godzilla. Now he's slimmer has a whiter head, white eyes, and smooth, shiny brows. As his rampage continues, he gets covered in silk and again drops into the sea. But in Ghidorah, the three-headed monster, he's back, now with a slimmer face and longer tongue. From this film on in the original series, Godzilla now defends humanity from more evil monsters. In Invasion of Astro Monster, Godzilla is thinner, his dorsal plates have more definition, his claws are dull, and his head is rounder. He shows off his new dance moves before briefly being put under alien mind control. Ibera, Horror of the Deep, gives Godzilla less angry brows. He battles against a big lobster and narrowly escapes an exploding island. In the sequel, Godzilla's neck is elongated. He's pudgier, and his dorsal fins are flimsy looking. His nose is also stubbier, and his eyes are bugged out. Oh, and he's now raising a hideous son. In Destroy All Monsters, he's slimmer, while his face appears more like it did in Astro Monster. He's put under alien mind control again, but once free of their control, he turns on them. For the next three sequels, his look remains consistent. In the first, he helps his son face off against a bully. However, this all takes place inside the dreams of a young boy, so... Moving on. Next, in Godzilla vs. Hedora, he opposes a pollution monster, and when curled up like a shrimp, he can now fly backwards. In Godzilla vs. Gigan, Godzilla has gained the ability to speak, while his suit, uh, oops, I mean skin, starts ripping during his triumphant battle. He appears slimmer in Godzilla vs. Megalon, with a shorter neck, soft bright dorsal fins, and a round pig-nosed face. He boasts a long-distance dropkick, but this movie is mostly about a size-changing robot, so let's keep going. In the next two films, Godzilla has an angrier expression and more detailed muzzle. He uses a magnetic upgrade to protect an ancient god from Mecha Godzilla, and in the sequel, faces him once more. But this timeline Godzilla is sent to retirement, and nine years later, a reboot Godzilla appears. This one's taller, has larger dorsal fins, a fourth toe, and his fangs and ears make a return. Although his reign is short-lived as he trips into a volcano, only to explode out in the sequel. He has a smaller head, a more muscular build, larger outer fins, and a cat-like face with a secondary row of teeth. He takes on a giant plant monster, who gets turned into glitter. In Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah, his original form, the Godzillasaurus, is taken out of the 1940s and exposed to modern-day radiation, turning him into a taller, muscular, and angrier-looking Godzilla. He fights Mecha King Ghidorah, and then gets dumped into the ocean. In Godzilla vs. Mothra, he's thinner, his dorsal plates are rearranged, and his neck is more ribbed. His head is flatter, and he has golden eyes. He battles against Mothra and Batra, and once again is plunged into the ocean and locked in by Mothra's magical powers. But somehow, in Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2, he's back. He has slimmed down shoulders and slimmer legs. He's also raising a blue-toned baby Godzilla. This time he's defeated when his butt brain is destroyed, but he's easily revitalized just moments later. Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla features the bulkier original with less detailing in the neck and larger eyes, Godzilla Jr. who is taller and chubbier with a greener color scheme, and a large flying blue crystallized Space Godzilla who gets obliterated. In this timeline's final film, Godzilla is glowing orange and his son now looks more like a hunched version of his father. When the original Big G has a meltdown, his son absorbs the radiation and turns into the new Godzilla ready for action. But the series would be continually rebooted, dropping him altogether. The first American Godzilla appears as a large mutated iguana with blue dorsal spines and a hanging dewlap. This Godzilla also has hundreds of tiny raptor-looking offspring, 
but this happy family is easily taken out by basic explosives. Back in Japan, in Godzilla 2000, he appears shorter, with green jagged skin, sharp purple spines, and a reptilian looking face. While he's nearly swallowed whole, he's good to go for the next reboot, Godzilla vs. Megaguirus, in which he's lighter, with a longer neck, and smaller mouth. He defeats a giant flying insect and is then sent into a black hole. In Giant Monsters All Out Attack, Godzilla is formed by the ghosts of vengeful World War II victims. He has smooth charcoal colored skin, white dorsal fins, and a hunched neck. His face is less lizard-like, with pure white eyes and no ears. But this Godzilla is mutilated by a drill missile, leaving only his beating heart behind. The following reboot, Godzilla against Mechagodzilla, re-adds the jagged design elements and introduces a more wolf-like face. In the climax, he's blasted by a beam, adding a visible scar to his chest for the sequel, Tokyo SOS, in which he's covered in silk and again flown into the bottom of the sea. Godzilla Final Wars features a taller, smoother, and more slender Godzilla, with longer ears and red eyes. This Godzilla fights against a multitude of creatures, including an upright standing 98-zilla. Then he and his hideous son head back to the ocean. In Shin Godzilla, he's first shown as a light-colored and armless creature, but quickly evolves, growing tiny arms and becoming more red with bloody accents. His massive main form is darker with a much longer tail that has a little face on the end. His jaw can unhinge and split apart, and he has a variety of handy new skills. He can also apparently reproduce human hybrids from his tail tip, but he's given a freezing agent, ceasing his evolution. The anime trilogy depicts a muscular rounded Godzilla with a tree bark like texture. 19,000 years later, he sports beard like spikes and grows to his largest on screen size, easily allowing him to become the ruler of Earth. Meanwhile, back in 2014, a plump American Godzilla appears. This titan has jagged dorsal plates, wide elephant like feet, and noticeable gills. He comes out of hiding to stop two hideous star crossed lovers. In Godzilla, King of the Monsters, he's taller and beefier. His lower half looks less stubby, his tail tip is more blunt, and his dorsal fins are less sharp and artfully glowing. Later, he's given extra radiation, and after ashes rain down on him, he gets a fiery new look and power upgrade, helping him to retain his kingly crown. Thank you for watching, liking, and subscribing. And as always, thank you to the patrons for supporting the channel. If you'd like to see more kaiju evolutions like King Ghidorah, Mechagodzilla, or King Kong, Comment down below!